Hey everyone, welcome to Popular Cruising. I am your host, Jason Leppard, here with a review of Tauk's Inspire. This was the first time I had ever traveled with Tauk, and I was eager to see what the tour company was all about, specifically on one of its signature cruises. Remember to watch all the way to the end of the review to see our final evaluation of pros and cons. To start, let's look at the Inspire's riverboat specifications. The lifestyle on board is luxury and amenities, but mostly in a country club casual atmosphere. If the riverboat looks familiar to others on the waterway, it's because it's operated by Scylla and chartered by Tauk. It first launched in 2013, has an intimate guest capacity of only 130, a crew capacity of 39, and a resulting guest to crew ratio of 3.33 to 1. Accommodation wise, there's a wide variety of staterooms and suites on board, beginning with Category 1 cabins. These sit down into the hull and thus feature a window at the upper edge of the room, plus 150 square feet of space, including a mini bar with complimentary water and soft drinks. Meanwhile, Category 2 cabins have the same amount of space and comparable amenities, but with an added French balcony to allow more natural light and a bit of the outdoors in. Then Category 5 ones naturally jump up in size to 190 square feet, also with a French balcony, but with an adjusted layout with a bathroom near the veranda, which amounts to a larger corner shower configuration. If you haven't already done so, we encourage you to please subscribe to our channel and click that bell icon to be notified of all our latest videos. We personally enjoyed a Category 7 cabin, which was really much more of a suite at an ample 300 square feet in size. It was indeed teddy bear approved and even featured a separate dining space off from the television and an expansive pair of French balconies. Besides a stock refrigerator, there was a welcome coffee maker and perhaps most impressive, a massive walk-in closet, which is more than enough for a week-long sailing. The bathroom was also equally large. Complete with delightful molten brown toiletries, a lovely floral display, and sizable shower with a handy retractable bench, wand shower head, and another rain head. When you're ready to book your cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Vacations, who will take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free, enhancing your cruise with an abundance of complimentary added value. You can easily start the process by requesting a free quote at the link here or in the description box, or you can contact them traditionally using the contact information below. Activities on board are understandably fewer on a smaller riverboat, but the atrium is still surprisingly grand with a classic symmetrical colonnade and crystal chandeliers. Off from an exploratory globe is the reception desk. As well as the tank desk, where you can consult with the cruise director. There's also a small boutique to buy several souvenirs and clothing. as well as a side library of bookshelves in various volumes. Opposite the library and past the central staircase is also a helpful elevator for those with limited mobility to get from deck to deck. Downstairs there's a bonus retail display, in addition to hair products, and a hair salon itself. It was definitely nice being able to get a convenient trim here. On the other side, there's also a fitness center with ellipticals and treadmills, as well as a dedicated massage room for spa treatments. And another surprising inclusion for a riverboat in the form of a steam bath and sauna. Which would be a fantastic way to warm up After touring chilly Christmas markets. Or another way to warm up would be to grab a hot chocolate or an included specialty coffee or complimentary cocktail at the Panorama Lounge and Bar. As a handsome observation venue, this room is already a fine social gathering space. But being able to enjoy house soft drinks, wine, beer and spirits, not just at lunch and dinner, but at any hour, really goes a long way in setting Tauk apart from its competition. It's also worth pointing out just how wonderful the crew is, always friendly and super accommodating.
Furthermore, the space here is exceptional for reading a good book or taking in the passing scenery. Just in front is the outdoor bow terrace for getting even closer to the surroundings. Thanks to these nifty wooden benches. Or there's the stern terrace for doing the same at the back of the vessel. Except smoking is allowed here, so be warned. Of course, to get away from any fumes, you can take these stairs up to the sun deck. We're off from passing riverboats, guests can enjoy a putting green to pass the time. or take a dip in the plunge pool. Alternatively nice to cool off in during the summer months. All while enjoying the marvelous sights of Europe's beautiful river valleys, lined with imposing castles and so much more. Stretching the length of the sun deck are plenty of loungers and chairs to relax by. Either in the sun or under shade. Plus, there's alfresco tables guests can potentially dine at, in addition to more outdoor furniture, at the front of the ship, forward of the wheelhouse. Bicycles are also on hand for guests wishing to take a spin on shore. which is sure to work up an appetite and perfect time for dining. Off from the wine cellar, the main dining room on board is the Compass Rose, which is also included. Open seating meals here are self-served at breakfast and lunch and fully served at dinner. There's a good selection of four tops and above for those looking to socialize, but very few two tops just for couples. The central buffet generally presents a wide selection of items, but quality varies. The majority of the food is very good, but some dishes are lacking in flavor profile. However, the carving station is always a highlight, as are most courses at dinner, like these artful plates. What actually most stood out to us were specialty desserts that occasionally extended into the lobby and lounge, like this fantastic ice cream bar, complete with sublime cherries jubilee topping. Or the marvelous chocolate extravaganza buffet. But what proved to be our favorite dining venue overall is Arthur's, an included alternative restaurant for a la carte meals, available at leisure throughout the day which also offers a great view off the stern and features a bonus hot chocolate coffee and cookie stand. There's even a wonderful collection of black and white talc photographs displaying the company's very interesting history here. But what really sold it for us was the wide variety of delicious comfort foods and gourmet grill items such as these. As on any small riverboat, entertainment is not as lavish as that on larger seagoing cruise ships, but there is some, 
encompassing on-demand selections from in-cabin televisions, ranging from Hollywood movies to inspirational travel logs. Or back in the lounge, there is nightly live piano music. as well as the periodic staging of local performers and musicians. As well as a display of fun crew talent, with an element of audience participation. But as you would expect from a successful tour company, TAC specializes in shoreside excursions, including a signature sparkling event as here. The Three Winged Manor House and Garden are used as a filming location, and it hosted our evening complete with live stream music and naturally a fancy dinner. Other touring days took us to explore the likes of Luxembourg. and the Grand Duchy's beautiful grounds. And by way of massive elevator, a stunning look over the valley below. There was also a terrific stop to visit Heidelberg in Germany, particularly its stunning castle inside and out. Shore excursions are very well organized for those who like being led by the nose everywhere, but occasionally the organization of them felt a bit too rigid, such as the slow pacing of disembarkation from the ship to the buses, and daily briefings occasionally presented on the coaches, where it could be missed if not on tour, instead of back on board. Our final port of call was Basel, Switzerland, where we discovered this wondrous kinetic fountain enjoyed alley performers' giant bubble art among a long row of shops. Stepped into the Basel Minster Cathedral on its 1,000 year anniversary to the day. And gazed upon the Rhine River and its many bridges. To conclude, here is our list of pros and cons for traveling aboard Taux Inspire. Among the few things we disliked and considered pains in the aft were the riverboat similarities to other chartered Skilla vessels, mixed food quality at the main dining room, and the regimented structure of shore excursions. But far more importantly, we liked these to take a bow. Exceptional service from the Taux and Skilla staff, delicious dining at Arthur's, and the line's all-inclusive amenities including prepaid gratuities. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos, watch our other ones, and visit popularcruising.com.